so that you may be, may be blameless and pure children of God, who are faultless in a crooked and perverted generation, among whom each of you shine like the stars. Arise, shine. You are the light of the world. Shine in, shine on, and shine out. Thus, this year's annual Greater New Jersey Conference began. I need to remind you that while I would like to take credit for most of the message this morning, what I've done is I've explained what I consider the pertinent parts of the conference and tried to reduce them to five minutes rather than three days. <laughs> while recognizing that there is a gap between belief and practice, we acknowledge the priesthood of all believers. In each congregation, there is an army of women and men who are not being used. Every member is important and has a function in the church family. Where are each of our gifts needed? Each of us has gifts, but some have no place to use them. The true measure of success for a church is not the number in our pews, but the number of laity involved in some kind of ministry. And ministry is more than just preaching, prayer, teaching, helping, and giving. Lay ministry includes talking publicly about what God has done in our lives, yet we think that the thought of having an altar call or giving testimony. Christian testimonies begin in weakness, not in strength. Explore with God's help and using Jesus as our example in preparing yourselves for ministry. Our local church is where ministry takes place. Let us not become a church of spectators. Bishop Scholl told us that we all come from creation trailing mist of glory behind us. Where are we? Where does God want us to be? And what are the steps needed to get there? And reading again from Philippians 2, verses 15, so that you may be blameless and pure children of God, who are faultless in a crooked and perverted generation, among whom you shine like the stars. Christ wants to have our present and to bury our past. In the Greater New Jersey Conference, 40% of our churches are growing. Attendance by young adults has grown by 10%, and there is a 33% growth in mission giving. Christ did not come to make a difference. He came to change the world. Mark Miller, the son of Reverend Miller, our former, former district superintendent, is a small band leader and keyboard player who is not only the music director in our conference, but I understand that he travels around the country singing and playing at many Methodist conferences. And when I was doing a lookup on the internet about him, I was trying to download some of his music uh, for this morning's service. Um, I found out that he's also um, a professor at Drew University. And um, he has been at the last three conferences that I attended. It's worth going online and listening to his playing and singing. Such songs as, I'm going to lay my burden down, down by the riverside. Most of you are familiar with the other version, I met my little bright eyed gal, <laughs> down by the riverside. My little bright eyed gal brought her dog, walked along with her this morning, who is called Grace, so that we know, know that Grace is president of the church this morning in two different ways. <laughs> Bishop Scholl spoke of the prophet Isaiah, who encouraged us to arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is rising within you. One theme of this year's conference was vital criteria. What is it? We, you, me, are the face of Jesus Christ. And with this, the bishop gave us a Skype presentation showing what volunteers were doing with work with children, and the rebuilding of houses after the Sandy destruction. The mission campaign, which we have already contributed to, we, our church, have already contributed to, 
has raised more than $4 million in the first year and could be halfway to the $12 million goal by the end of this year. Our bishop told us that in today's church, we need zest, grit, and heart because we face a different world today than many of us faced in the past. We need to be seeking God's next right answer. And with change, half jump for joy, and half mourn the loss of the past. You will remember that Bishop Scholl, after the Methodist Church trial of a Pennsylvania minister who performed the wedding ceremony for his son and male partner, was removed from ministry. Our bishop at the time spoke out strongly against the church trial and said at conference that we must work for unity in the church and find ways to include our homosexual sisters and brothers in the whole life of the church. Further, that we could not legislate our way through this. Many of you will remember that our church, this church, requested some years ago that the words homosexuality is not compatible with Christian practice be removed from the Book of Discipline. The, that, um, I, Pete, I think you um, had a, a large part in trying to get those words removed, and I can't, I try to remember whether or not you were the late conference representative or not, but I, I couldn't recall that. But uh, that was an important step, and it was a step that, that the, um, uh, the conference failed to, to pass and to move along. And yet, once again, here it is probably 10 or 15 years later that that issue has come up again, and the Methodist Conference, the New Jersey Methodist Conference, is only now beginning to readdress that issue. And uh, Bishop Scholl is the uh, spearhead of that movement. I recently read in the New York Times that that minister who had been defrocked has been reinstated in the Methodist Church, which shows a little bit of a turnaround in terms of the way we're moving. In, in this particular conference, I don't know what's happening in other conferences, but in this particular conference, and in the Pennsylvania conference, where that minister was located, there's beginning to be some movement. We celebrated a special service of church repentance for the way Native Americans have been treated historically. The Native American spiritual healing included prayer bundles made up of cedar, sage, and tobacco. I brought one this morning. It's starting to lose its smell, unfortunately. And it included the presentation of a cross that was made of shells collected along the coast. At different times during the conference, we would vote on legislation. The conference booklet, which is this, will be available after church with some of the pages containing important legislation flags. Reverend Olu Brown asked the question, is your church bright enough to shine in a dark room? There are different kinds of lights, safety lights, searchlights, solar lights, and sometimes spotlights, stoplights, sometimes spotlights too. <laughs> We need to let all of our lights shine. Each local church has its own special light. What is ours? We can find it in Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and prayer. Jesus, the light, draws people near, directs people along the path, and helps each of us reach our destination. As long as Easter is real, there is no dead end of church. Jesus will send us to the blighted, the broken, and the painful places. Later, the leadership reports shared that 43 sandy damaged homes have been repaired with 90 more to go. Since the Methodist Church is a connectional church, volunteers come from many other states to work on this project. And the Seoul Korea Conference donated $20,000 to the work on Sandy Repair, a place halfway around, around the world. Matthew 5, 14 to 16 reads, You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do men light a lamp and put it under a peck nature, 
but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Bishop Scholl reminded us that while a good sermon takes us to the mountaintop, without a good foundation in the teachings of Jesus, we cannot follow him. Jesus isn't teaching about belief. He is teaching us how to follow him, how to be his disciple. Being the light of the world is a high calling, and it involves leading people to the light. In the Israelites' exodus from Egypt, we learn from Numbers 9, 15 to 18, when God told the people to camp, they would camp. When he told them to march, they would march. Even though they were in the wilderness and living in tents, God was with them. They were on a journey that would lead them to the promised land. The promise comes with a process. Don't give up your process, and it is part of God's promise. Our journey is a process. Our journey is necessary. Our journey is about change. And then there was this little aside, a little aside at that point where uh, Bishop Cole said, for every new level, there is always a new devil. <laughs> oh yes, I just heard a name on that one. <laughs> Many of us here this morning are part of what is known as the loyalty generation. And as, a, as an example, many of us have been attending this church for more than 35 years. The current generation is called the relational generation. How do we reach out to them and form the relationships that will bring them into our church and hold them? Each of us is called to be a minister. Amen.